Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731 1230. That's 731 1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1 866 820 that's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. This is Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Uh, in the studio, we uh, to my right, I have Kurt Dukach, Raymond Fletcher, Perry Haichu, and we have Lawrence on the board making us sound good, and every week, Beach finds us stories that are worthy of the show. In studio today, we have Chef Jeremy Cooper with Seven Leaf Events and Productions. He's in town for Champs. And if y'all haven't been out to Champs, then you don't know where the place is to be this week for sure. Um, Chef Cooper, or is it Chef Jeremy? You can call me Chef Jeremy, just don't call me late for dinner. All right, all right. Well, so Chef Jeremy, um, could you give us a little bit about your background? Um, you know, you were mentioning some magical butter and yeah, some other um, things in there. What's going on? Well, for the past two years, I have been the executive chef and West Coast director of operations for Magical Butter, the machine, and MagicalButter.com. I got to build the first ever cannabis food truck in the world. Woo-hoo. I've been uh, <clears throat> kind of breaking records all over the country with the Magical Butter team. And I love them like brothers, and they've been helping me launch off the Seven Leaf Productions and events. So, tell us a little bit about Seven Leaf Productions. You were telling me you were telling me yesterday that you are uh, you host events and services for cannabis events. Tell us a little bit more about that. That's right. So, for the as I said, for the past two years, I've been doing this for the Magical Butter team, as well as uh, events like uh, Canacon and High Times, and uh, producing VIP parties at our studio, the the Magical Butter Studios in downtown Seattle, mm-hmm. and uh, it became such a popular thing that I've branched off and started producing major VIP parties on the rooftops of hotels here and around the world and around the United States that are cannabis friendly events. Right on. And speaking of VIP events, stay tuned. We will have a time to call in so that you can have VIP passes for all three days of of this VIP party at the top of the RIV. Um, so that sounds pretty exciting. You are um, also the first person to buy legal cannabis in Washington? <laughs> yes, oh I was. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I've gotten to do uh, quite a number of uh, firsts. I got to be the first cannabis chef to, uh, and uh, first food truck on the salt flats and uh, to race a vehicle in the salt flats. Oh, that wow. was cannabis related. I was the first cannabis chef to cook at the Inter- Intercontinental, which is Michael Jordan's restaurant in Chicago. Uh-huh. And uh, I got to zigzag across America for 45 days on a tour, um, teaching people about cannabis and cannabinoid deficiencies. Right on. That's that's really cool. And you're also a former drunken chef. I'm the former drunken chef. Yes, I am. I'm a, a dedicated molecular gastronomist that manipulates alcohol on a molecular level. And now I manic- manipulate cannabis on a molecular level. Well, I was going to say, I know Raymond manipulates alcohol on a molecular level. <laughs> <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> I thought you drank the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> No, I smoked the fifth. <laughs> All right. Um, well, as as far as the Magical Butter Studios, there is another there is another thing that was near and dear to my heart that I heard that you guys uh, started or that you participated in the Cannabis Tech Meetup of Seattle. That's right. Red Russick, uh, the startup king, uh, started the Wired Magazine start kickoff and yeah. it came to our facility, brought in all of these. And, and by the way, I, I think nerd is actually a beautiful term uh, <laughs> because I consider myself a nerd. But it was a lot of wonderful canon nerds that came together to say, and if they weren't canon nerds, they had inspiration to be canon nerds. And they are beginning to explore the future of technology for the cannabis industry. 
Uh, that was so cool that I actually joined that meetup so that when I go to Seattle, I'll, I'll have uh, some fellow cannibal, cannabis nerds to hang out with for sure. For sure. Um, there was another thing that you guys are doing that I thought was absolutely insane. 56 university tour in 17 weeks. That's correct. Uh, the Hope Clinic, Inc. I recently partnered with them and they are helping me connect America to cannabis. Um, as we look forward in the future, you're going to see a lot of people aren't going to have jobs and a lot of people aren't going to have what they need. And I think we found a solution in cannabis beyond the medicinal aspects. I, I firmly believe in that, uh, they, that the this industry, cannabis industry, can um, can go into solving world hunger um, problems. It can also employ people in the textile industry. It can employ people, of course, in the grows, productions, um, and, you know, of course, the dispensaries. Um, and there are so many jobs to be had with mm -hmm. cannabis that that legalizing cannabis across the America would just, you know, just really revitalize our economy, I believe. I agree. And it's it's so needed. And in the next five years, the economic study that just came out by the White House says in the next five years, between 18 and 23, there's going to be a major jobless rate for those without college educations. And I see this as an opportunity to go into the colleges and not talk about let's getting high or using it as a medicine, but talking about it it as this is something you should consider training for as either a vocation, a profession, or begin looking at actual curriculum to begin educating people in America on cannabis. Well, so what are some of the places that you're going to stop? What are the some, some of the universities that you're going to visit? Well, we know we're going to be at uh, the University of Washington. We've got some off-site campuses. We've been talking to people at Ohio State, uh, in Florida, New York, uh, of course, Colorado, and all over the U.S. But our key element is to target schools that are not in the cannabis network. So there's, there's no legality in that state whatsoever. So I want to go after South Carolina. I want to go after uh, Florida. I want to go after if they don't have medical and they don't have recreational, I want to be there because I think that we could create a grassroots movement through education and entertainment no that doubt. can change America. No doubt. Absolutely. Uh, I read an article recently that was saying that marijuana is the fastest growing industry in the United States and all the jobs that it's uh, creating and how how fast the industry is projected to grow and all that. And, you know, we're not we're not replacing jobs that we lost in the recession. These are all brand new jobs that we're creating here. That's and I think right. people kind of forget about that sometimes. Um, and people forget that they can be potentially very lucrative. Like you said, if you put the work in and if you get the training, you know, master growers and people of that nature, they make, I uh, assume they would do very, very, very well considering the lucrative nature of the industry. And you know, there's definitely room for young people to do well uh, for this. I've thought for a long time that this is one of the most lucrative investment opportunities since alcohol came out of prohibition or here in Nevada since, uh, since gaming was regulated and legalized. So, you know, it's just all about uh, opportunity and whether people are willing to see it. So let's just hope that we can enlighten some of these young people, like you say, to kind of look beyond the standard college degree that they're being taught and maybe apply that knowledge to our industry. Absolutely. We need to remove the stigma and begin the education. No doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so this is just about opening the eyes of the next generation to uh, the miracles of cannabis stuff that's going on in the cannabis industry. Um, how is it connected to NASA and space travel? <laughs> well, I'm I'm kind of a NASA nerd. Okay. Um, I uh, I went to my multitude of space camps. Uh, my first job was technically McDonald's, but my second job, I worked for a company called Sanford Rosen Associates at the age of 15, and I became an executive technical recruiter for NASA, Martin Marietta, and Swarjup Technology. Oh and my! And I recruited technical personnel for the International Peace Platform, which later became became the International Space Station. Um, I had some affiliates in the NASA industry and I have stayed close to these people over the years. 
And as I began to read and research into cannabis and look at its form, whether it's the CBD, the hemp aspect, or the THC, the medicinal aspect of either sativa and indica of the plants, genus, or species, I found that it was very manipulable. And then I reached out and I found that other people found it very manipulable. Okay. And through that, We've recently discovered that it is a possibility in a very short period of time to begin manipulating the plant for deep space travel. Uh, the deep space travel aspect would be that we would manipulate the plant for carbon dioxide scrubbing as okay. well as a food source and manipulating them to grow larger seeds as a protein source. And of course, uh, fuel and other byproducts of the material as well, including clothing. Okay. Jen, we have a caller on the line, but my question for you before we get to them, with your Nansa nerdiness? Yes. Are there any aliens? I, 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 um, I, I know that. And have the, you seen the Starship Enterprise? Um, I have seen the Starship Enterprise many a times, and I do support all sci fi aspects because uh, the, as close as we can get to this plant, I think that we'll see more and more alien creatures. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I think I saw some today at Champs. All right, Paul. <laughs> we have Lee on the line. Lee, thanks for calling in. Hey, I'm sorry. This is uh, Don Schneider actually calling. Lee, uh, let me use his phone. So oh, okay. my mistake. I couldn't get through. Is this Jen? Yes, it is. Jen, this is Don Schneider. Uh, I met you down at uh, Fast, uh, what does you guys call around here, First Friday? Oh, First Friday. Hey, Don, what's up? Hey, um, I know that uh, I had a friend call you in regard to the hemp oil. And my question uh, would be, or at least let me tell you my circumstance. I have a cousin that was diagnosed with cancer three and a half years ago and has been uh, developing all the commercial ways to try to take care of him. And um, it has spread throughout his body called the spider cancer and went from his pancreas all the way to his brain. Oh, wow. He's had three different brain surgeries and all of the other chemo that it, you can have. He's in perfect physical specimen shape outside, but inside something's going on. And I want to get into the hemp oil because uh, Lee shows me all of the different things that are on YouTube and I uh, want to see how I can help Greg uh, fight this thing a little bit. Well, um, let's talk offline about this, um, you know, so that I can kind of connect you to some people. But um, to start, I think that you should uh, research the Gershon diet. And that is, to, to start off, you have to have really good nutrition, put good stuff in, and, and try to turn this around. And then we should talk also about, um, like, Rick Simpson oil or Phoenix Tears, something like that, to doing a regimen um, of that. Well, he's all in favor of doing that. And after all the research that I've been doing, you know, with Lee and everything that's up on YouTube, I think it's going to benefit him. And, and right now I'm one of those stages uh in my life with him i can help him out and he got diagnosed he got 30 days or excuse me 90 days to live so wow okay so we'll get we'll get on that right away okay don thanks jen appreciate all right, that thank you all right okay we're back um with jeremy cooper chef jeremy cooper with seven leaf events and productions um if you guys want to call in call in right now at 702-731-1230 we have Three passes to give away for the three nights of the third, fourth, and fifth. And you'll get to choose the night that you want to go out. All right. Or 866-820-5528. Okay. So back to our, back to our uh, interview. Uh, climate change. Climate change. Uh, connecting you know, cannabis to America. Climate you know, change. Connecting America to cannabis is so important on so many levels, and climate change is definitely one of them. Um, if you look at the amount of agricultural crop that we could create in some of our downtrodden agricultural areas, I mean, let's admit the American farmer needs help, and so does America. And by planting more cannabis, specifically hemp, excuse me, um, hemp, we can actually help create 
carbon shares. And I think there's a lot of companies out there that would really enjoy that as well uh, to help us offset the amount of carbon that we're putting into the atmosphere by producing plants that can potentially grow in a very short period of time, 12, 20, 30 feet tall, and scrub as much oxygen as, an, as area, carbon dioxide as an oak tree. So I think it's a, I think it's a very good possibility to help America and the world uh, as far as that's concerned with hemp. That's great. That's great. And you brought a friend with you. I did. I brought Dr. Beats with me, uh, a cannabis Hello. DJ and drummer. And he's actually going to be with us in the High Rollers Suite, um, of course, at the Riviera, uh, which is actually brought to you by the Vape Co. and the Hope Clinic. Uh, we're connecting people to delicious cannabis this weekend, cooking up some delicious meals. They're all organic, vegan, uh, or vegetarian, and, uh, of course, gluten-free and GMO-free. Oh. So, right on and this gentleman's mixing up an amazing laser light show i i don't exactly know what he does but it's awesome when i hear it <laughs> yeah. i do it all a little bit a little bit of live mixing a little bit of dj electronic uh just fit the mood you know what are people into people vibing people chilling people want to dance feel it out and make it happen we're all uh we're here to host we're here to have fun we're here to uh connect like-minded people and create a space for others to do what they do so that's what we do all right, so yeah. you guys need to call in at 702-731-1230 for these passes and, um, and you know, have a great time. Have a great time. Yeah, as part of these passes, I want to let you know you're going to get a uh, private meet and greet with uh, Master Bong, myself, a number of celebrities. You're going to be my personal guest, and you'll get to meet with my crew and uh, the cocktails and everything are on us. 21 and over, though. Oh, right on. 21 and over. Well, I saw you today with a Sasquatch. Yes. Uh, is that uh, your Sasquatch? It is my Sasquatch. It's Sammy the Sasquatch, my personal bodyguard. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> he's actually being uh, played by a close friend of mine, Shane, uh, who is also Chef Shane. He'll be actually whipping up all of our delicious organic food today. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So we're going, uh, so it's, cannab uh, it's, it's GMO, non-GMO. Non-GMO. It's yes. completely organic, Correct. vegan, yes. or is it vegetarian? I like to do vegetarian. Yeah, yeah me too. Um, and you guys are going to be spinning and... How late is this going to go on? Well, I, I tell everybody I work from 9 to 5. I work 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. when I'm in Vegas. So usually we're out of there by 4.20 is what <laughs> we typically tell people. He said uh, the past, past couple of parties have been, but uh, guaranteed till about 2 a.m. Oh, right on. Uh, all right on okay so are uh, you guys are out here um promoting uh promoting for the vape the vape the pins? vape co the yeah vape so co. I, I met these guys about a year ago they started creating these new pens the vape co pen has uh no free radical carcinogens or no additional burn off it's a medical grade pen system that has a titanium coil with a ceramic core and a lithium ion battery and uh, I've they give me a number of these pens to give away to some of my very needy patients um, which I sponsor a number of PTSD patients from the local Veterans Affairs office and uh, they have assist us in a ton of stuff and they invited us out and said they'd like to help us connect America to cannabis and the Hope Clinic has done the same thing as well by um, helping sponsor some delicious and amazing and nutritious infused and non-infused foods can you tell us a little bit about more uh, more about the hope clinic yeah so the hope clinic is located in seattle there's three offices there right now and they hope to expand uh, all over the country their goal is to bring compounding cannabis to america now right now cannabis is cannabis and you go into a dispensary and you purchase your cannabis um unfortunately there are not enough knowledge out there about compounding for example ling Zhao or rishi mushroom uh -huh. combined with cannabis oil i like to use mbo which is the magical butter oil which is a, a little more there's a little more protein of the plant and uh, cellulose of the plant when you run it through the magical butter machine and make it. Um, you combine that with Ling Zhao mushrooms, which you put right into that. And it has the very well-known fact for thousands of years to reduce tumors and the inflammation that goes along with that. And a lot of people don't know these different things that go along with it. And I actually just recently learned about it in the last year and a half. 
Okay, we're coming up on our first break. Stay tuned for some local regional news and our 420 moment. Don't forget, we're giving away tickets for the VIP at the High Roller. Please stay tuned. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Greenspot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. All right, with that sound, that means that we are honoring a form... 20 moment celebrity our honoree today is joe cocker uh john robert joe cocker was born on may 20th 1944 he is an english rock and blues singer and musician who came into popularity in the 1960s he is also known for his gritty bo- uh, voice and spasmodic body movements during his performance um he covers uh several popular songs particularly those of the beatles Cocker's cover of the Beatles, with a little help from my friends, reached number one in the UK in 1968, and he performed the song live at Woodstock in 1969. Um, And the Party at the Palace concert for the Golden Jubilee of Elizabeth II in 2002, he also performed. Did you know that he was thrown out of Australia for smoking weed? Really? Yep, back in 1972 when he toured Australia. Him and six members of his entourage were arrested by police for possession of marijuana. The next day in Melbourne, assault charges were laid on after a brawl at the Commodore Chateau Hotel. And Cocker was given 48 hours to leave the country by the Australian Federal Police. Oh, you know you're a badass (laughs) if you get thrown out of a country. That's for smoking In Australia, at that. I mean, didn't they throw all the criminals to Australia? They were a penal colony. That's hilarious. They were a penal colony. They were originally a penal colony. (laughs) What, are you laughing because I said penal? (laughs) Raymond, you are horrible. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) Well, Cocker's main influences were Ray Charles and uh, Lonnie Dunnigan. And his first experience singing was in public at the age of 12. So for that, we honor you. And this is our 420 moment for Joe Cocker. (laughs) All right. Raymond, you you just can't get over that, can you? Who got thrown out of a penal colony? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to call in for those for those VIP tickets to the High Roller Party at the top of the Riviera. That we phone got- number again is seven zero two seven three one one two three zero. All right, so we, we said it a little bit some slower. Announcements coming up. What's well, our announcements? <laughs> oh, one more time, you said it slower. Seven three one one two three zero. Announcements this Friday. This Friday we have our first, we're going to be out on that first Friday from 5 to 11. Come catch us down by the Artifice. Uh, what else we got going on, Jen? Oh, we got Champs in town for oh. the next few yeah. days and the uh, High Roller After Party. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Um, we have 
One of our um, own, Jason Sturtzman, he's on the board of directors. He got uh, a seat on the Independent Laboratory Advisory Committee, and we're very proud of him. Uh, we would have him here right now, except he's doing 420 yoga right now. So this moment is in for you, Jason. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Jason. Oh. All right. Now, not only do we have First Friday, uh, next week is going to be our first anniversary of the radio show. Episode 53. Episode 53, for sure. Wow. Um, and our our guest this time is going to be Beach. He's going to be, you know, he's our producer and he doesn't say much unless we're off the air. Then he yaps a lot. But um, he's going to be on behind the mic because he's going to tell us tell everybody what goes on behind the scenes of our show um and we're just going to talk about what's going on or what's gone on uh in the past year we are also creating our first cookbook and uh, we want to have our members share their knowledge and recipes for better health and we should be done with that in march and i think i i can talk chef jeremy into sharing one of his recipes i would love to do that thank you so much i'd love to do an original recipe for you Oh, we that would, would love be amazing. you to lend your expertise to us, and thank you so much. Uh, for it would be my honor. Position. Definitely. You guys are at the forefront of uh, changing policy here in Vegas. I'm very proud and honored to be here. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. And speaking of policy changes, uh, the General Assembly convened mm. yesterday. They had their pomp and circumstances of swearing in. But we have uh, a couple things on tap. Uh, how we get around the valley. From driving 85 miles an hour up the highways to riding a wheelchair down a bike lane. The state lawmakers will consider plenty of changes to Nevada law that will affect how you get from point A to point B. I drive 85 anyway. I know you do. <laughs> uh, BDR 225, that's bill draft re request. request. Uh, pot and driving under the influence. Uh, there's a growing needing for law enforcement to evolve with the medical marijuana businesses, especially for people under the influence of medical marijuana, said Republican Senator Don Gustavon. So we'll see what's going to go on with that. And my good friend uh, Mo Dennis is going to make it easier for me to drive in the middle of the street. Really? With, with your chair? Wheelchairs and bike lanes. Oh, right on. Nice. You know, I know you have some access problems with the curbs at times and you have to you have to ride along the streets and you know that that shouldn't be an issue for you, but you know it is. For for anyone else and and I know we're we're cannabis news hour, but with the legislature convening, you know, and the wheelchair thing being important to me and you know, the driving just anyone in the valley getting to and fro. You know, so it's good that we have the opportunity to let our listeners know how to get involved and, you know, follow the legislative process or whatnot. And are we having another legislative class? We should have another legislative class, legislative training to so that you can track your bills on Nellis. I think that there are eight to ten cannabis bills on our legislative uh, track this this uh, this season or this legislative session. All anyway. 119 days that they work. I'm sorry, 120 days that they work. So they'll work 120 days straight, and um, at the end of it, they look pretty ragged, <laughs> for sure. But stuff gets done, and then we take a two-year break, because this is Nevada. I think we're one of only six states that still only does it. It's only, there's only two left now? That's ridiculous. You see, we've been hey, talking hey, about this for a we're striving to be last. Well, oh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, we have a bad reputation for being last in a few things that we shouldn't be last in here. Uh, we definitely need uh, at least a yearly legislature to convene. Absolutely. There's so much pressure on these people to get so much done. You know, we only have 120 days every two years to handle all our state business. It's absolutely insane. And no wonder they look so ragged. We have to try to push thousands of bill drafts through in these 120 days. How could you possibly read all of them or even instruct staff to read all of them? Yeah. Like, you know, here's a bill draft right here. That's kind of funny. Extend daylight savings time year round. Bill draft request 583. A friend of mine wants to get rid of daylight savings time forever in Nevada. I think it's kind of rad. Totally off topic, but there you go. It's just one of the hundreds of things they have to deal with. Riding with riding a motorcycle with no helmet law. Mm -hmm. Another thing they have to deal with. Just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bills. Well, so, you know there are eight. Well, back to back to the center, guys. There are eight eight bill draft requests that have to do about with cannabis, 
hemp or hemp yeah and i think that you guys should go on nellis and track your bills and you can t- track yeah. 10 we'll, bills for free for free, yeah. for free. and we'll, after we'll, that it's just nominal and we'll put together another class for that and get, we'll announce get it on our radio that. show next week the date another another big news here in local local politics uh somebody just signed up to run for city council what who was that i believe that's our <laughs> esteemed chairman of the board here raymond um, I wasn't going to say anything till filing closed. Thank you for pulling the rabbit out the hat. But yes, I have filed to run for city council. Well, I thought I thought that was public knowledge. I th- saw some posts of it. Sorry about that. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, unfortunately, the incumbent um, during the cannabis hearing said, I don't feel comfortable with this. And that was the point that I decided that I was going to run because the great people in Nevada made the decision to have medical marijuana, to have access to a plant. And for you to be a representative of the people to say, I don't feel comfortable with that. And look at the good that we've done for our community. How many patients have we helped get their card? How many people get access to medication safely that didn't have it before? I mean, we got the rules for dispensaries, we got cultivation facilities, that if they ever open up, and Jen, I think you got something on that. What if they ever open up the, the cultivation, the the marijuana stores and whatnot? Oh, you mean the Clark County's being sued over medical marijuana actions? They're still in they're still in court because of this. Is it is it's not really new news. We talked about this last week and the week before, ad nauseum uh, pretty mm-hmm. much. That the barrage of medical marijuana lawsuits that have been filed against Clark County, it, it, the largest local government in Nevada, to play a role in de- approving dispensaries. There is a dog fight going on from the state in Clark County, and then also private dispensaries are, slu- are suing, are getting in on it and trying to sue because there is so much you know, gray area about how they got their license, where they were ranked. Um, how they, the ranking was done. Where, where's the transparency? It, it, there was just a lot of, a lot of snafus that went on. Only 10 dispensary applicants have gained the necessary approvals from both the state and the county to set up shop, even though the law allows up to 18 dispensary, uh, dispensaries in unincorporated Clark County. So they only got approval for 10 from both the state and the county, and then some uh, got approval at state that did not get approval at county, and then some got approval at county that didn't even rank in the state. And you know, and so it's just a big, big, big mess. Um, I'm just saying, I believe, you know, I'm not Dion Warwick, nor do I have psychic friends, but <laughs> I believe I was the one that called this. Exactly, every single thing that's going on I believe that's the testimony I provided. I'm just saying. Well, meanwhile, we got- while this mess of dispense, oh, what, we got a breaking story or something? What's going on? No. 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 Well, we we still have one more uh, pair of tickets available for the uh, high roller suite tonight or or tomorrow or Thursday. Please call us at seven zero two seven three one one two three zero to win that last set of tickets. So, meanwhile, while all these dispensaries are kind of in limbo Not so, yeah so many so many people are continuing to get their cards there's a story i have in front of me about how the demand and uh for medical marijuana is booming and is going to continue to boom all year long uh demand for medical marijuana in, in nevada is expected to at least double this year as dispensaries continue to open and state lawmakers discuss potential patchwork legislation for the budding industry for starters the number of medical marijuana card holders in washoe county jumped more than 65 percent in 2014. Mm-hmm. Uh, dispensary operators picked by the state are in the process of rolling out their businesses now it's only a matter of time before the first 65 dispensaries open and more people start asking their doctors about medical marijuana um, I mean, this is just, you know, it's just going to continue to explode. Here, here's some real hard numbers. At the beginning of last year, there were 588 Washoe County, that's where Reno is, uh, Washoe County residents with medical marijuana cards. At the end of the year, 975 were cardholders. In Clark County, cardholders jumped from 3,544 to 5,833. Statewide, 8,055 Nevadans were medical marijuana cardholders at the end of the year. We're not surprised at all by these numbers, says Joe Bresney, the spokesman for the Coalition to Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol in Nevada. He expects up to 15 to 20,000 patients in Nevada within 12 months of dispensaries opening, which is, it's a, 
it's a lot of patience. Yeah, but I it's mean, back. It's kind of on track with what's happened everywhere else. Everywhere else that as soon as you build it and they will come. Well, of course. Yeah, it's just the fact that they haven't opened. We get that all the time. Well, why should I get on the program if there's no dispensaries and this and that? And just the anticipation of them opening is driving this boom that we're seeing. Well, I but, would say protection. Yeah, that's if a, you, no, absolutely. If you consume cannabis in the use, state of Nevada... You oh yeah, well you're preaching. Oh, you're preaching to the yeah. choir. I could talk all day about why you should get a car, definitely. But mm-hmm. you know, that's p- people's basic one of their basic uh, complaints of why they don't want to do it is because you know I can't walk into a dispensary right now. But it's coming in the next well, month. Well, it's so. that and the cost of doing it here, which is another thing which that we're working we're on. Work very hard this legislative session to get those costs lowered again. Um, you know, and maybe have some insurance help with this. You know, but some people are also arguing, why am I going to pay this high cost for a card for one year? Or for two years, and then turn around, and recreation is going to be there. How much is the card here in the Vegas area? Well, the state fees are a hundred dollars, and the doctors is anywhere from you know eighty to one hundred and twenty dollars, and then then there is a also not the well, fingerprinting, the notary no, fee, no notary and fee. then twelve dollars to the DMV. Uh, all said and done, doing it yourself, you're usually looking at about two hundred and fifty dollars, and it takes about right now about three to four months to complete the process doing it yourself yeah so that's why a lot of people turn to the referral services they do charge a little bit more but they make it very easy they take all of that back and forth you have to do out of it um, and they give you a temporary card right when you leave so you have something that you can use to get your medicine right away like dr reefer dr reefer gets a lot of flack for their name you know and and the past reputation they have new owners and they're not the same people as that that originally opened up that business. But it's like a one stop shop. You walk in, you pay your money, you get a you know you get your signature from the doctor, and you have to go back when the state uh, papers come in and do a notary on them. Um, but after that, it, it's just one stop, and you're done with it. And they're help you know they they've helped a lot of people uh, mm-hmm. in Clark County. And, oh, and you know what? We also have Karma um, Holistic Health, and they are on the south southwest side of the valley. So if you're up near Whitney Ranch, Dr. Reefer's up there. If you're in the southwest, uh, Karma's over there. And, and they both have helped patients uh, for us and to get patients on the program for we can. Is there a plethora of services available, such as topicals and massages and and bath salts and things like those lines, available as cannabis products in your medical area? No, not no, yet. we have to make them ourselves. Really, we, we, we haven't all make gotten them we haven't gotten any of those businesses licensed yet. We don't have any cannabis spas or anything like that. Mm-hmm. They've briefly discussed it during city council regulations, but no no one really seriously came in. They're like, look, we want to open a spa. We need to have approval for these products because they're going to have to look at that probably as a whole different classification of business licensing. I would assume, because like mm-hmm. I said, I don't think we've ever. We, no one's ever tried to bring it here yet, as far as I'm aware. Really? You know, the Hope Clinic in Seattle, we have three offices, and it, pro- it takes you uh, less than 24 hours to get your medical card. Mm-hmm. It's about $75. You come in and see a doctor, bring in your referral. And the best part is, is we even have local uh, hospitals like Swedish, which is a uh, world-renowned hospital that is actually now referring to cannabis as medicine and looking at giving direct referrals. Oh. I've actually seen my first referral from Swedish Hospital in the past two weeks. It happens to be one of my staff members. I'm getting goosebumps. I can't wait until that kind of stuff starts happening here in Nevada. We have waited so long and have been, we've been a grow it your own, do it yourself yeah. state for so long. And for those that can, they do. But for those that can't and are really ill, it, it's really hard to tell people, you know, you got to grow it yourself or find somebody to grow it for you for free not to mention it takes six months from seed to harvest and usable medicine so it's like hey yeah i got cancer and i'm going through chemo and i want to use this to help the effects but oh it's It's i'll be done with chemo by the time i have my first medicine yeah you don't only talk about physical elimination uh physical limitations you have people that just don't have the knowledge or people that are advanced in life that you know hey i don't expect a grandma to start growing her own or anything you know i'm don't sh- i'm sure granny doesn't have like 12 plants chilling in the garage somewhere hmm. well some of them might might i was might gonna say it, my but... grandma had a huge garden <laughs> 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 but we were in northern california so yeah 
There you go. All right. Do we have any more local news? Oh, somebody was busted with 235 pounds of marijuana. Mm -hmm. They were busted in Ohio, (laughs) but they were Nevada residents. So Nevada residents were taking their cannabis to Ohio. And do you know why they got busted? Mm. They failed to signal a turn. Oh. A traffic violation. Rookies. Yeah, exactly. You know, when you're riding dirty, follow the rules. Oh, All right. So they were driving with over a million dollars worth of uh, cannabis across state lines, and that is a felony, folks. So the first, how, how many pounds did you say again? I'm sorry. 235. Okay, okay, sorry. Because oh. usually the cops are like, oh, we caught him with a bajillion, gajillion dollars worth of weed and... And all this, they always over exaggerate these well, crazy things. No, we it, know, 230 it, pounds of weed. That's that's a lot of weed. So yeah, it's Saturday right. night. Yeah. What, what kind of what kind of car were they driving? That's, that's an awful lot, unless it's compressed into those little cans. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so what happened was they failed to signal a traffic turn, and the Ohio State Trooper um, busted them. They they smelled it in the car, and then they had a dog sniff out 235 pounds of cannabis, and they said that that in Ohio that amount of cannabis is worth approximately one. $1.2 million. Wow. Wow. And that's a lot of weight. You know, that's why I like limos. It's, it's <laughs> a little easier. <clears throat> you just uh, keep on driving and, and you're good. You just let somebody else do the driving. Be responsible. Don't drive dirty and definitely don't smoke and drive unless you are a patient. And that's a whole new gray area and a whole new discussion. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, we're going to go on our second break of the day and uh, we'll be back to talk more with uh, Chef Jeremy and DB Beats? Dr. Beats. Dr. Beats. Right on. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. The Von Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. Hi, welcome back to Nevada Cannabis News. Um, This is our last segment, and I'm Jennifer Solis. We have Kurt Dukach, Raymond Fletcher, Perry Haichu, Beach Baker. We have Jeremy Cooper in the house, and we also have Dr. Beats. What's up, Dr. Beats? Oh, everything is up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I met you yesterday, and we were kind of talking about a little bit about how you got into this position. Can you kind of expand on Mm -hmm. on not just the DJ part, but just how you how you came into be uh, be with uh, Chef Jeremy? Indeed, Uh, it's a very pretty interesting story, very serendipitous, if you will. Um, I wandered into uh, one of the cannabis tech meetups we uh, mentioned earlier. You know, saw online a thing called the Cannabis Tech Meetup. I'm a computer programmer, just recently graduated. at a place called the Magic Butter Studios, I thought, well, Tuesday night, I can't pass this up. My third night in Seattle, uh, got a really nice presentation, talked to a lot of, you know, a lot of nerds, a lot of people uh, just doing doing things in an industry I had no idea with. Um, about 11 o'clock, people started clearing out. We had a little uh, party in the VIP room, sliding bookcase and everything. It was quite a, quite a wow. magical little space. And about 11 o'clock at night, Jeremy looks over to me, he says, 
so what are you doing here? <laughs> it was uh, kind of a close-knit little thing, and I just told him, you know, I rolled in from Wisconsin. I, you know, apparently looked like I belong, hung out, and uh, a month or so later down the road, here I am sitting in uh, the champ He's show. He's being very modest, by the way. <laughs> very, really, very really. Modest. He, um, <laughs> Uh, the reason we looked over and asked who he was is because we had just cracked a $400 bottle of bourbon <laughs> that had the magical butter done on it uh, and this really cool bottle because somebody had closed a almost billion dollar deal in uh, British Columbia with a uh, a tribe to grow hemp. Oh, right And on. we turn over to him and we're like, it's it's time to roll a Jeffrey, which is our, our, oh, our we know what magical are. blunt <laughs> that we created. And uh, he, we start rolling this thing up and I'm looking over at this guy and I'm like, who are you? And uh, he's like, I'm Dr. Beats. And I'm like, <laughs> really? And he ended up crashing on my couch for a couple of days while I was in town. And we drove him around with green hair and the saw and the magical butter mini truck, the little Volkswagen <laughs> truck. And he got to experience life in the cannabis fast lane and he hasn't left since. Yep. Oh, right <laughs> on. Oh, um, and you know, and that stuff, that kind of stuff happens in the cannabis world where you're just sitting somewhere at one moment and then the next moment it's like, Magic happens. Mm -hmm. Magic yeah, that's happens. Right. That's why we're offering those three tickets to uh, the High Rollers Hospitality Suite. And we have our three winners already, so thank you guys for calling in for that. Um, you know, how Perry and I met were, was kind of serendipitous also. I guess we were both up at the legislative session, and uh, we, were, and we had a mutual friend, and and uh, I said, I said, who is this guy? Who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy day. I was just uh, sitting at home smoking a bong doing nothing like watching reruns or something and my buddy craig calls me and he's just like we're going to carson city tomorrow i have a, a hearing i have to testify at for cannabis science research foundation i'm just like oh man no not no nah, come on yeah not, not tomorrow and he's just like you got you come on you got to do it so i get off my ass and we go up there and he pushes me to testify and before you know it uh it was just unbelievable like we all went to I testified in front of that Judiciary Committee and ended up hiring a lobbyist. We ended up meeting Jen that day. Yeah. And just so many good things ended up happening, and the bill ended up getting passed, and we got it out of committee, and, like, here we are, you know, a couple yeah. years later. It, it's it just, like you said, it was just incredible how, how, uh, how people you never expected to have such an influence on your life would really kind of turn things around for you. Like, I'm sure when you walked into that room today, you know, that day, Doc, you, you never Dr. really Beats. realized what a significant influence it would have. And here we are, you know, it's just... Indeed. It's uh, like-minded people. I, I joke with Jeremy that I've been training for this my whole life. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I felt the same way. It's just when you meet the right people, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess my grandpa told me luck is when opportunity meets desire. So Very Good nice. people growing green together. That's right. That's right, you guys. Do we have a story about uh, how much has been sold, Raymond? In the, I think we they... do. We have... Uh... A breakdown by Arcview of how much weed uh, state sold in 2014, and the top five from the bottom up: Michigan with 65.8 million. Uh, I think that's got to be a typo. It's uh, well, California. It, it, their ranking looks weird. California has 1.127 billion with a B. Wow. Colorado is eight hundred and one point nine million uh washington state is three hundred sixteen point two million arizona a hundred and forty point two million and like i said michigan see that's a lot of money that is a lot of money that is i can't wait to start reporting our numbers about how much that we've sold here well Cal nevada will present more opportunity and an easier entrance than colorado's thriving but overflowing market all right you guys don't we have don't we have something like 500 cultivations approved in nevada and you get a car and you get a, car. And oh. you get a cultivation and you get a cultivation <laughs> look you under your seat yeah, exactly. I, didn't, uh, I didn't see a story i got this crazy story out of california about a guy pleading guilty to growing 3,700 plants guys facing 20 years Ooh. in prison and a million dollar fine and potential deportation to mexico after pleading guilty to growing more than 3,700 marijuana plants at a cultivation site in the plumas national forest officials with the office of the united states attorney eastern district of california said in news released wednesday 
Alejandro Soto Silva, 22 years old, was arrested in July 2014 after United States Forest Service agents and Plumas County Sheriff's deputies found a large cultivation site with 3,724 marijuana plants near the Soda Creek drainage. He pled wow. guilty at a charge of plea hearing Wednesday at the U.S. District Court in Sacramento. The finding isn't the largest in past years, but it's a substantial amount. They say uh, the you know criminal district in California. Now, was he was he convicted by himself? Only person took it took it all. Twenty two years T- old. Took that's it a lot himself. of cannabis. Um, let's say he faces an additional maximum penalty of ten years and a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar fine for the D. The depredation of public lands and resources. The cultivation site damaged the land and need resources, costing the Forest Service at least nine thousand five hundred dollars to repair. Now He's that's a load of crap. Yeah. Well, hold <laughs> well, on. Well, the thing is, is when you plant cannabis, doesn't it clean up the soil and put nitrogen back? Well, in the what soil? they're talking about is all the piping and all the stuff they have to, oh, you know, they yeah. have to dam up the river, and it's a whole thing. Oh. So that's why they have to go in and spend those man hours to clean that crap up. Potentially, there's also an ecological impact if they're not taking it in a natural form. So if they were piping in, let's say, pesticides or right. things along those lines. Uh, bad fertilizers. Uh, right. Yeah, and the sentencing is set for 9 a.m. on April 15th with U.S. District Judge Kim- Kimberly Mueller. Now, this is really the whole story right here. Uh, this is just an ancillary story, but this is the same judge who's hearing the rescheduling of marijuana. Because remember, this is a federal case. So oh, this yeah. is that same judge who's hearing that rescheduling coming up. So it's kind of coincidental that she happens to be hearing this huge grow prosecution very closely to the time when she's supposed to be deciding the rescheduling of marijuana in the United States. So they did the the article didn't go in to say when the uh, when the hearing is scheduled for, but I would assume it's somewhere around the same time because they happen to mention it within the article. I wish they would have expanded upon it a little later. Maybe when we come back next week, we can expand upon that a little because I thought that was very very interesting. But anyway, we'll see how it plays out. All right. Well, Kurt, don't you have something in the sports section? Yeah, I got a little news out of the NFL. Uh, great game, by the way. That was this last Sunday. Oh, yeah. Say. That was an awesome game. It was, it was a good let's game. Let's throw the ball. <laughs> yeah, Not a good decision, but a good game. Um, oh, there's the already conspiracy beat. theories about the offensive coordinator throwing the game and all kinds of stuff, but I don't want to get into that. But anyway, remember uh, Josh Gordon from the Browns uh, earlier had to serve a suspension due to a uh, little bit of can- uh, cannabis testing positive. Um, and he claimed that it was secondhand smoke and uh, basically lost that. But he served some. He had to serve a suspension earlier in the year. Well, earlier this week, the NFL had suspended Josh Gordon again for the entire 2015-2016 after he failed an alcohol test. No, oh, so what? he got suspended for alcohol this time for an entire year? Yeah, yeah. He He's claimed- got to be on probation or something because that just doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, he claims that he failed the test uh, was the result of four drinks on a flight to Las Vegas with teammates after the season had already ended. As soon as he left the plane, he found out he'd, be sub- he'd have to subject himself to a test, and then he failed. Well, so. What team is he on? Well, none next year. The, what, what, the what? Browns, right? Browns, the Browns, Browns. Browns. Oh, they never do anything anyway. Well, do they? you know, that's. I, I don't. I don't get it. This doesn't make any sense. I've the seen over. the celebrations in the locker room where they're spraying champagne all over each other uh, for the Super Bowl and all it that kind of stuff. Like, I don't. Alcohol. I don't understand. You know. No, it's just like you're suspending somebody for cannabis use. Weren't they like, had, that's a wasn't Budweiser a huge sponsor of the Super Bowl? <laughs> alcohol is yeah. the number one sponsor in sports yeah, in general. I, that, that, I don't. How are you going to penalize a guy for drinking your primary sponsor's product? You know, what if he came out and said, well, I was drinking Budweiser? You know, how would Budweiser feel about that? How do they feel about the fact that the uh, the the NFL players are not allowed to drink their sponsor's product? Is that like negating endorsement? Well, once again, like I said, I'd like to hear what Budweiser has to say, the people who are shelling out all this cash to advertise on it, considering the play. I don't know. I don't, let's let's see how this plays out. He's going he's gonna to appeal it. So we'll see. Got the whole year. Hey, I'll use somebody's product once the dispensaries are open and advertise <laughs> it. Just saying. Endorsement is awesome. Endorsement is awesome. Um, what about more beer news, Kurt? How about a pot flavored beer coming out of Colorado? <laughs> I don't know. I think that would taste kind of skunky. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> Buds and Suds coming soon. <laughs> All right. So, Buds and Suds, but we have First Friday coming up. 
uh, this Friday. Champs is this week. We have our one year anniversary show next week. We are putting together our first cookbook. Contact us on our meetup page. And Jen, is there anything else that we have our well we have our next potluck coming up on february 22nd that's a sunday this time um check it out on meetup.com forward slash weekend 702 for the whole calendar patience meeting is the second saturday at the coffee bean, bean and, and tea, tea leaf. leaf yes it is uh it's grow the classes weekend after this saturday next. and there's a grow class this saturday we have room for about four more people all right everybody till next time be safe out there